Yeah, so it, so that were, were you steeped in punk culture growing up? Was that a was that a principal influence for you uh, in terms of some of the things that you brought into the show? Yeah, um, I mean, growing up, I was I got a lot of music from from both parents. Uh, it was like, well, I got a lot of music from my dad, and then like Carol King from my mom. So like that's <laughs> that's the definition of it. But I I love shows. I love concerts. I like I like going punk shows I think are really fun I'm not a huge mosher I'm very small so right. I enjoy I enjoy watching them I don't enjoy being in them as much um but yeah I just love that culture and I think that specifically that moment of music and like 90s grunge punk but even like 80s punk I have a book of Patti Smith poems right here like Patti Smith is a hero of mine as like a writer and as a musician just the at the ethos of punk i think is so so strong and i was like i was thinking when i wanted to write this play that i wanted it to be super music heavy it's something i like it's something that i think if there's going to be anything that i can write very technical about it's like this kind of music geek like environment that i thrive in so i'm glad that it was committed in that way but yeah i do just love shows and i wanted to see I wanted to see it in theater. And the original conception of this piece was that I wanted it to be at a basement show when I was thinking about it being in person. I wanted people to walk down to this grimy basement that kind of smells like stale beer and like be watching a play, watching a live performance. Cause I think those, that act of performance, and there's a bit in the show that I, that I tried to touch on this, like, the fear that something might happen, that something might go wrong, I think is the same in punk and in theater, that you're like, someone's going to break a string. They're playing way too hard. Someone is going to snap their string and the show's going to be over. The same in theater where you're like, is this a line? Did someone mess up? Did someone flub a line? Is someone going to drop it? And an Aaron Sorkin player, you're going to forget a word. Like there, there's that tension. So I wanted to get across that tension through theater and punk. That was that was that was fantastic. Your your uh, description of Nevermind, which I would call one of the perfect albums Absolutely. out there, regardless of whatever the last track is. I thought that was a <laughs> that was a, that was a cool part, but also that description of the amp it was the amp right going out mm -hmm. in the audience. Uh, that was such a fascinating. You know, because I observed the culture at you know some some level of remove, but like to. To think about how that actually played out that people had you know like brought something up or brought it down but didn't destroy the amp because it came onto the floor like that's you know that was that you know it was pretty cool to think about yeah no that's how i see punk and like all music really as being is like music that puts the music in the power of of the people and uh -huh. the, uh, like that is what i think is really strong about music and what is really powerful so I wanted to try and I was thinking like, what is the most direct way I can think of people influencing music? And it's just messing around with amps. Like how can you like mess with someone's drive or gain and make a different sound? So. And you set it up so well from, you know, starting with the E chord and, you know, bringing it up to 11. And I, I, I thought that was just like a, a lovely thread. That yeah. was, my dog got scared at that part. She got, she had to run downstairs and I, I, I was like, I said out loud, that was rad. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was curious, actually, I mean, um, are, are Marcus's tastes, are they your tastes or did you, did you write him as having like a different, I don't know, talk, talk about that. I think sometimes the the Slater Kinney opinion is an opinion that I have. I do think Janet Weiss is the best drummer of all time. I think she's rad. Um, but I think I think Marcus's tastes tend to veer more towards grunge. I used to not like the Eddie Vedder like yeah kind of voice. I used to not like that. Now I do a little bit more. But I think his tastes are more of his own in that he just likes really weird things. I think Marcus would get into some really esoteric shoegaze kind of freaky like really intense stuff that i would be like i just kind of want to listen to john denver today like i i think i think i he might veer towards more hardcore than i might um 
what about tell me a little bit about some of your other plays is is that sort of playing with um thinking about space and sort of the spectator experience is that something that has come into uh, um other work that you've made or is that sort of special for this piece um i think it's it's very special for this piece in that the relationship to the audience is really strong but um and i think a lot of artists can relate to this where like if you're tired of one medium you kind of go to another for like a break and i kind of putting two and two together i have another play that is ideally a theater for young audiences show about um about the warsaw ghetto in the time of the holocaust uh and is a much uh is like the the essence of it would be in general darker but it's about this this jewish boy who's who's mute and finds a soldier's camera and this expression of what do we see when we look through something that we don't typically get to hold um, in uh. that in that time period. So I think Mar for Marcus, it's very similar is like, what do you do with this, this power of expression? And how do other people perceive it? Because in the story, it's called exhibits in the zoo. It there, everyone else is terrified of this camera because of what it might mean for the small child if he's found with this camera, like things are not going to be good. But to him, it's something wholly, wholly special. And I think Marcus music is the same that other people might want him to do something with this art, but what he's going to do is going to be completely his. So, yeah. I love that. Uh, so what's, I, I know we talked about what's next for you, AmeriCorps, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, in terms of playwriting, is this, is this something that you're, you see being a part of your life forever? I mean, Honestly, yeah. I would say yeah. It's one of it's one of the few mediums that has that is stuck in some ways. I I can't really sing. I make music, but I can't really sing. So it does it does its own thing. But I just love, and, and right now it's different because we're connecting over a virtual space. But I do love that tension of something could go wrong in theater, and I I was listening to a podcast with Greta Gerwig who wrote Lady Bear, like Greta Gerwig is great. Sure. Um, and she was like describing a play where someone like fumbled a cigarette and then, and then in the audience, she was like, oh, like classic, like you, you messed up, you fumbled a prop, but then it was actually part of the script. And that just, that difference of theater, I think is amazing. Whereas when you watch, and nothing wrong with movies, I love a good movie, but when you watch a movie, it's going to be the same every single time. And like, if I watched Goat Song on Facebook, and I'm going to watch it tonight on Instagram, it's going to be, it's going to be different. There, that oh, tension is still yes there. it is. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be different. That tension is still there. So I love playing with that. I love playing with like, there's moments in, in Goat Song where like he leaves and he's gone for a while or he's messing with tech. And my mom was sitting next to me being like, is this like, what, what's going on? Like, is something going wrong? And I was like, no like this is it and i think that that special quality of theater makes me want to stick around for a while mm. yeah that's per i mean that's that's so much of what this play uh that's so cool about what it plays with right that we have this idea of this like a, a theater you know people talk about like you know oh this is like this politics it's theater and it's like you know implying that there's things fake about it and that sort of finding that slippage that place mm -hmm. Um, um, in between where, you know, where it's, where it's always, always new because you're always responding to new stimulus if it's, if it's going well um, and where those mistakes happen. I mean, that's like, you are living in that place with this play, which I really, yeah. really love. No, absolutely. You, that was very, very well put. That was awesome. Um, all right, well, uh, anyone, any last uh, uh, thoughts or questions before we let you go? I will say I was just I felt, felt like that question came out strange like are you going to make plays after this but it's, <laughs> it is so interesting that something I love about this competition is you know because it's blind submissions so we're not we're not looking at anything about the people who wrote the play and you know at the afterwards we look at the bios and it's like there are all of these people who have like won awards and are really established in their careers. And I love that someone who's like right out of school is, mm -hmm. and it actually feels so right for this, that we're, you know, the, uh, we're asking people to write in a moment that is like pushing boundaries and 
um, yeah, so it's uh, maybe not surprising that someone mm -hmm. who's, you know, sort of uh, new in this path and is not sort of set in this is the way I write plays is someone who would really um, find that sweet spot. But, um, yeah. but yes. Uh, yeah, I just no, want to say it's exciting. Yeah. I'm excited to see where you go with your career. I'm also excited. If you find out, let me know. That would be great. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Well, and this will not be the last time we talk, but keep yes, in touch with course. us and let us send us your work. And yeah. Once yeah, again, course. bravo, man. I Thank really, Thank I you, really Pete. appreciate this, man. This is this is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Cool. All right. Well, see you on Instagram. See you on Instagram. Bye, friends. <laughs> Bye. Peace out.